Hello, and welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. Today, we're going to discuss tension. How does tension manifest itself in our bodies when we play? What can we do to avoid unwanted tension in our performance? Well, that's the topic for today's video, so let's get to it. First off, I'd like to thank everybody who's liked and subscribed to the page. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button and push that notification bell. You'll get a heads up on whenever I put out some new content. So we're talking about tension. Tension is something that we all know what it feels like. Whether it be on or off the horn, all of us have had a tense day at some point. We might be having a tense day right now. How does tension manifest itself when we play? One of the most common areas is our shoulders. Now our shoulders can tense up when we play simply because we're just going to pick up our instrument. When we bring the instrument to our lips, oftentimes that will create a lift in the shoulder area. It's very natural because we're picking something up and regardless of whether it's heavy or not, we will engage our shoulders in that action. Now, another common place we notice tension is in our neck. The neck area can bulge out quite a bit when we play. Now, there's a couple reasons that could happen. One reason could be is that you're overblowing. The other reason could be is that when the air gets to your lips, it can't travel out, so it gets backed up and it goes back into the neck area. It can also show in our cheeks, where we can get puffy cheeks for the same reason. The air can't escape, so it backs up and our cheeks puff. We want to try to avoid that as much as we can because it's a sign that there is tension going on somewhere in the body. Another common place that we encounter tension is in our embouchures. A lot of times, if your embouchure is too tight, it will actually hurt your sound because you're blocking the freedom of the airflow. We don't want to get in the way, we just want to be part of the process. Some less common areas that we don't associate as much with tension is our abdominal region and the sternum. Now, if either one of these areas have tension, it's gonna affect our airflow. So we want to be careful and take note of our posture, making sure that we're not slouched over, or we're not standing up too straight. That can also cause tension. I want to go over a couple of exercises that help me identify where the tension was in my body and when it started in the process of me going to play. I think it's important to note that the process of us playing our instrument starts with the intent in our head. So that could be the beginning of where the tension starts. These exercises are really simple, but they're extremely helpful identifying when that tension starts. So the first exercise, we're just bringing our finger to our lips and we want to keep everything still. We want our shoulders to stay still. We don't want our mouth moving and just see if we can keep our lips and everything in place. Now, as we add the stimulus of the mouthpiece, the object here is to the same thing, keep everything still. And as soon as the mouthpiece touches your lips, you take it away. So you're just trying to see if you can get your body to not tense up at all as you bring your mouthpiece up like you're about to play. Now we have the same objective as we add the horn. We don't want any movement in our shoulder area. We want to keep our embouchures nice and relaxed. And remember, the objective of this is to identify when the tension may start. And if we can eliminate any unnecessary movements, we can put that energy into playing the horn. So now that we've identified when the tension starts, how do we go about overcoming it? Some things I noticed about myself was that when I would get ready to play, there would be all kinds of muscle movement with my mouth. I would lick my chops, 
I would move my lips around. It's the position I thought they needed to be. All of this was happening prior to me playing a note, definitely causing tension before there needed to be any. Through those exercises, I was able to practice not having all of that engagement happen for no reason. I had to tell myself mentally, you don't have to do anything until you have to do something. Let's look at something else that can help us overcome tension in our playing. It's important for us to be aware of the role the tongue plays in airflow. And we should take note that the first thing that the air is gonna encounter when it leaves our throat is the tongue. If the tongue is in any kind of strange position or blocking the way of the airstream, it could lead to tension. Another way to combat tension is mentally. What are you thinking about before you have to play a musical phrase? Are you thinking, oh man, I have a high note, so I really need to get ready. Are you thinking, I have to play really soft right now, so my corners and chops have to be really tight. Those thoughts will feed tension to whichever muscle group you're using. In this case, we're using our entire bodies when we play. So we want to feed the opposite thought when it's time for us to play, and that is relaxation. We want to tell our bodies that as the horn comes up, it's time to relax. Now that's something that was kind of counterintuitive, especially for me. But as I continue to learn, I understand that expecting relaxation when I play greatly leads to the reduction of tension. So do you have any tension in your playing? If so, were these exercises helpful in you identifying when the tension starts and where it is in your body? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.